Hi everybody, welcome to another Palmico dog training Q&A. So you guys know how these work. These are questions from people that are following the Palmico Pal, Pal Mikkel, Mikkel? Pal Mikkel? Pal Mikkel dog guide. And the Palmico dog guide is our general dog training series. So we have series to help people to train hunting dogs. The Palmico dog guide and Palmico dog training is all about helping just anyone that's a non-hunter just follow our same training principles, techniques and philosophies to just have a pet that's well trained and doesn't have any issues. Uh, you can find out more about that at palmicodogtraining.com and you can check us out on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube and if you're watching the video version of this Q&A you can listen to the audio version of this one and loads of others on the Paul John Michaels podcast available on all the good podcast apps. Two questions today. We've got back to this a little bit sooner, which is good. Uh, first question is Damon. I have a five-month-old German Shepherd. She's pretty bitey, getting less so with disengaging and disapproval. That's good. Um, and yeah, that's really when the dogs are doing that jumping up bitey thing or if you go to pat them, and they open their mouth or lift a paw. It's, it's a phase that a lot of dogs go through. And that's basically the key. is disapproval and a push away. And disengage and move. Movement's a big one. So disapproval, up, push away, disengage and move. Start walking. Don't hang around. Um, so he's saying she's pretty bitey. Getting less so with disengaging and disapproval. But still nipping a lot. The hard part is... She's not as far along in her training as I would have hoped because it's so hard to give her praise in the form of patting as she just tries to nip. So anytime I try to praise and pat her, she nips and I have to disapprove and disengage. I've been relying on verbal, but it doesn't seem to be strong enough. So it's, when you say that, I think because you're talking about praise and disapproval, but I think you're talking about you've been relying on disapproval, on verbal disapproval. Um, and you don't think it's been strong enough. She has massive potential when she is engaged and interested. She's awesome. Such a smart dog. Will the biting stops as she completes her teething stage and grows up a bit and then progress quite fast once I can give her proper praise or am I missing something? Yeah, so I would be pretty sharp with that disapproval and I wouldn't hesitate to give her a check on the long line either. So if I had a pup that was getting pretty bad with its jumping and biting and nipping and things and they're doing it most stop drills, I would hold the long line. When I go to pat the dog, as soon as it goes to bite, I would up and a little check on the long line. It's just a physical cue. You're not hurting the dog. You're not choking it. You're not hitting it or nothing. It's just like a touch. But instead of doing it with your hands, which can be quite, uh, which isn't necessarily the best way of dealing with it when you've got a pup that's biting at you, the good thing about the physical cue with the long line when a dog is biting at your hands is if I've got, uh, let me see what you guys can see here. If the dog is the microphone here, if you're looking at this on video, and I've got one, my right, this hand here holding the long line, and this hand here going in to pat the dog. If I use, if I go to push the dog away when it bites me, that's my hand coming towards it, so it's a form of engagement. But if I'm holding the long line, and I bring my hand in and the pup goes to bite, I pull the hand away that's trying to pat the dog, and I check the dog with the long line, which is disengagement. Both hands are coming moving away from the dog, and I'm giving it the up, and it's getting the check on the long line, and I stand up and walk away. It's just a It just snaps the pup out of everything that they're doing. And then we walk. Move, break it up with time and space. That movement's super important. Um, walk, walk for a decent distance, and then try another stop drill. 
And if the pup does it again, do it again. Eventually it will realize that pattern, usually very, very quick. And often if you do it perfectly, it'll realize it the first time you do that. And then the next time you try to do, to give it a pat, um, hopefully you can get that pat in, give it a pat, step back, finish the stop drill, release and move on. If it does it again, give it the check. If When it doesn't do it, it gets a pat and pups learn very quickly. There's no point in doing that. It's not fun when they do do it. And as soon as they stop doing it, everything becomes fun and easy and they get a pat and you move on. And I know it's easy to be hesitant about putting too much pressure on a pup or a dog. But the problem is, is if you're too soft with it, a simple problem like this that's actually very, very easy to stop can slowly escalate and begin to become a real problem with your relationship with your dog, a huge problem in training, and everything can go de like downhill really quickly. And, and that dog can have issues for life, whereas if you just deal with it properly, quickly now, everything can move forward smoothly and, and it's positive. You know, so it's it's really worth um, getting firm with things like this, nipping it in the bud, moving on, and having everything go uphill from here instead of having sort of getting really stuck on it and letting, having things deteriorate. Little things like this can roll over and uh, feed into other things that don't work properly that can spark off a massive issue one day with something. Um, it really can. And she says, oh, Damon says, will the biting stop once she completes her teething stage and grows up a bit? By five months old, I don't think this is that that typical puppy teething thing that you often see this in pups at, at 10 or 12 weeks old where they go through a stage where they just get a bit silly and growly and want to bite everything. And we are you, usually this sort of stuff is sorted out the, around then. But you can have a week or two there that, that even while you're dealing with it properly, you can still keep rearing its head. But if you deal with it properly, it disappears pretty quick. Five months old, I don't, I don't think this is teething. This is a relationship training um, type um, behavioral issue now. Um, yeah, so I hope that makes sense. Let us know. Um, throw another question in the inner circle. Send us a message. Let us know. Keep us posted. Uh, Stephen, hi Paul. I have a eight month old Kelpie called Max. Training is going well so far with only a couple of setbacks here and there. I haven't followed your guide to the letter such as we don't crate Max unless we go out at night time and we don't have an outdoor kennel. If I'm guilty of anything, Max has too much free time in the backyard. I think you call it a section. Yeah, I do. Um, we walk most mornings on a short lead using a check chain in a quiet area and we also walk in the afternoon most days in a quiet park on the long line. My current issue is that when I walk Max, when I'm with other people, he wants to be in the front. And if I stay in the middle of the walking group, he pulls hard. When I move to the front, he settles down to a degree. But it's more difficult to get him to be calm than when I'm by myself. I'll stop walking him in a group until I resolve this issue. So I'm hoping you or someone else in the group can give some tips to try. Um... Yeah, so a few things on this. I mean, yeah, an eight-month-old dog is going to meet, be more difficult to keep calm when you're in a group of other dogs. And there's two things that will sort that out. One is, one is just more time training and more age on the dog. Eight months old, they're eight, nine, ten months old. And really, if I had to pin it to a couple of months, eight or nine months old is like the peak of when they're getting forward and confident. They're almost a fully grown dog. They've got heaps of energy and strength, and but they haven't got that much brains yet. You know, it's like a 18-year-old um, guy, you know, full on. 
but not that smart necessarily, if you know what I mean. Uh, so a big thing would just be more training, more time and age, and and that will help a lot. And the other thing is going to be working on it in that situation. So those are really the two things, is just continue training um, and let the dog age and mature a little bit. And, it, and no, like, no doubt about it at all, the same if it's eight months old now and it's a bit of a handful, if you continue your training properly, by the time that dog is 10 months old or 12 months old or 14, 15 months old, it'll be much easier to deal with in that situation. Um, also, you know, you talk about when I'm out front, he's not as bad, but when I'm in the middle, he pulls hard. Well, if you spend more time out front for a while and then he'll improve there and then you might be able to sort of get out to the side a little bit of the group and let him get used to that and then over time he might be good at walking right in the middle that's sort of that principle of training and steps anytime we can break something down to what's the easiest way to start that dog off in that situation and you've already sort of found it as walking in front so if I had a dog like that that was not too bad in front but if I go in the middle it's a bit of a shambles I'll just walk in front for a couple of group walks and then like I said maybe off to the side and behind um, just tell the people you're walking with look my dog, dog's a bit of an idiot when it's in the middle he's young I'm still training him so I'm just going to hang off to the side or out the back or in front for a bit and he will man he'll he'll get used to it and calm down um, especially if you follow all those principles pressure on what you don't want praise on what you do want continue with training um, he'll improve so that's my take on that same thing if i've missed something out or you want me to elaborate on it or you get stuck uh, or even if it gets better let us know that's it guys um yeah keep sending your photos in and thanks to everyone that signed up to the palmico dog guide lately we'll see you in the next one see you later